this lesson, we're going to look at consolidation theory. We're diving into a new topic now that is pretty fundamental to uh, soil mechanics and involves a lot of different aspects coming together. And when it comes to consolidation, there's really two concerns that we have to worry about. One is how much consolidation will happen, how much settlement will there be? And the second is how long will it take for that to happen? Because consolidation is a time-dependent process that's related to water being squeezed out of saturated, soft, compressible soils. So here's a sketch that shows um, what we have. Let's say that we have this saturated, compressible soil layer down there. It could be clay, silt, peat, something that's saturated, and when you load it, will compress quite a bit. And then um, I put some sand on top of it here because it turns out we always have to start with some effective stress at the top of the layer, um, and it just makes it much cleaner at this point to uh, have another layer on top. And notice that the water table is up here, so this, this whole layer is saturated. Then we add a load to the surface, delta sigma V. So that could be from a building. Say we want to construct a, uh, a tall building or a house or something, we put it on that sand, you know, it's slowly going to settle as, as it gets squeezed out of the soft, compressible soil. And then there's a, a stiff layer here at the bottom just to indicate that uh, there's not going to be any more compression as you go down. Right? We have to integrate strains over some depth range down to a stiff layer where basically below that layer we don't worry about strain anymore. It's not going to contribute to settlement. So, uh, okay, so the question of how much settlement will occur, that, that's what we're talking about in this section, section 7. The question of how fast will the settlement occur is section 8. And that's where we get to solve the second order partial differential equation. So that'll be exciting. Um, all right, so let's talk about um, compressibility of soils and the components of settlement that contribute to um, surface settlement that can cause damage to structures. Um, it turns out one of the key uh, calculations a geotechnical engineer will do is how much is a solid soil going to settle in response to some loading condition, and then is that settlement tolerable for the structure? built on top of it. So um, soil compressibility is really due to three different components, two of which we completely ignore. So there's really only one that we're worried about here. So the first one is compression of the soil particles. And what I mean by that is if you take a, uh, a little mineral grain and you have the material that that mineral grain is made of, let's say it's quartz, uh, if you apply a pressure to that little bulk material, it will undergo some volume change. Bulk modulus is not infinite. It does have a finite bulk modulus that will cause it to have some compression if you apply pressure to it. Um, similar to the fluid, right? Pore fluid, the water, let's say. Uh, water does also have a finite bulk modulus. So when you load it, it will compress a little bit. Um, the thing is that those bulk moduli are really high, right? They're so high compared to the third source of settlement that we completely ignore one. So number three is expulsion of fluid from the pores. So that's not related to compression of the material itself, the solid material. This is a rearrangement of the solid particles into a denser configuration, right? So the, <clears throat> the void space is reducing, water is getting expelled from the pores as we load the soil. This number three is really the dominant source of settlement in uh, consolidation. All right, so like I said, mineral grains and water are essentially incompressible. We don't worry about one and two. Um, and let's look at a phase diagram now to look at what's going on. Here we have an initial condition. There's the water and the solids. Uh, it's saturated, so we don't have an air phase in this case. It's just a two-phase material. We also don't have any masses or volumes, so I'm going to just assign one to the volume of solids and then the volume of the water is E, right, the void ratio. Okay, and then we impose some loading. Actually, let me draw that little loading condition on here. I'm going to draw it right on the phase diagram, which is kind of funny, but let's say we put delta sigma V on the soil. Well, we've just said that the water and solids are going to be treated as incompressible, so the only source of settlement that happens is that the water phase gets shorter. Right. The solid phase stays the same height since the material is incompressible. Water is just flowing out of the soil. 
the change in height is equal to uh, delta E. And, you know, that's the since since the height of the water, the volume of water was E, the change in the volume of water is delta E. So what we have now is an expression we can use to relate um, change in void ratio to, vo to volumetric strain. So epsilon V is volumetric strain. And it's equal to minus delta E over 1 plus E. And uh, you might be wondering, why is there a minus sign there? Well, we're going to enforce a compression positive sign convention, like we always do in soil mechanics. It turns out that if you go from this reference condition to this deformed condition after consolidation, delta E is actually negative, right? We've had a compression. The void ratio has gone from being high to being low. Therefore, delta E is a negative number. And it's compressive, so we have to multiply it by a minus 1 in order to get a positive volumetric strain. So that's why that sign, that negative sign appears there. All right, let's go on now to talk about components of settlement. There are three primary components, and then there are some other sources that I'll briefly mention at the end of the lecture today. So capital S is the total amount of settlement. SI is immediate settlement. SC is consolidation. And SS is secondary compression. So SI, SC, and SS are the three primary sources of settlement that we worry about. Um, okay, immediate settlement is caused by three things. One is shear deformation. So um, that one might seem to be a little bit counterintuitive at first because we usually think of settlement as being related to volume change. But let's say, for example, you have like a thick piece of soft rubber. Uh, rubber is almost incompressible because its shear modulus is really low compared to its bulk modulus. And if you were to push your finger on top of the piece of rubber, your finger would move down. But that's not because the volume of the rubber is changing, it's just because the rubber is deforming. And so when you push down, there's heave in other parts of the surface of the piece of rubber. So that, that looks like this diagram right here. Right? You put loading in one spot right there, you get settlement right beneath that spot. But this settlement right there is not due to volume change, it's because there's some heave over here that compensates for it. And so the volume of the soil stays the same. And you can see this element right there, that I'll zoom in on it. That little soil element actually is in a state of shear, not volume change. Right? It's just, um, you know, it's deforming in an angular way, not in a compressive way. Uh, okay, and then there are two other causes of immediate settlement. One is compression of gas in unsaturated soil. So if you have a soil that's not completely filled up with water, there's some air in there, when you load the soil, the, the air bubbles might shrink a little bit as the water pressure increases, right? And so um, there can be compression of gas. Gas is not an incompressible material. Uh, for consolidation, we're dealing with saturated soil, so we don't have to worry so much about number two. Uh, and then number three is compression of mineral grains of water, and we've already established that that's negligible. So it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist, it's just that it's so small that we don't worry about it. All right, let's move on to consolidation now. So consolidation is caused by compression of the soil skeleton and the resulting expulsion of pore fluid. Basically, you load the soil, it wants to get denser. Uh, in order for it to get denser, water has to leave, right? So there's an analogy that I'll show here. It's, so it's like a piston pushing against a spring and the cylinder is filled up with the fluid, and there's a small hole in the top of the piston that allows the fluid to drip out slowly. So if you were to load the spring, let's say there's an initial force on the spring and it's under equilibrium, so there's, you know, all of that force is taken up by the spring, none by the fluid. Then you add a little bit of increment of force. Um, what will happen is that water will need to leak out of the small hole in the piston in order for settlement to occur. Settlement will cause the spring to take some of the load, which will reduce the load on the water and reduce the flow rate at, of, the water, of the fluid moving through that small hole. And eventually, if you wait long enough, fluid will leak out through the hole and all of the load will again go onto the spring. So when we extend this analogy to soil, the spring is analogous to the soil skeleton so when you apply a load, how much 
volume change is there in the soil skeleton. Um, the fluid and the whole are, the, the fluid would have some sort of uh, viscosity to it that the size of the hole would control the flow rate, rather, you know, in consideration of that viscosity. So that's kind of, that's like the hydraulic conductivity of the soil, those two things combined. Um, the initial force that was on the spring is analogous to the initial vertical effective stress. So how much vertical effective stress is there on the soil? And then delta F is analogous to some kind of applied loading on the soil. All right, so key concepts are that the spring force is proportional to settlement, okay? There is no load in the spring until the spring gets deformed, right? F is equal to K times U, where F is force, K is stiffness, and U is displacement. Uh, settlement increases only as the fluid flows out. So the settlement can't start happening until the fluid goes through that little hole. Therefore, what happens is when you apply that delta F, let's say it's an instantaneous load application, initially all of that force is um, is transferred to the fluid and then slowly transfers to the spring, right? So when you first apply it, all of it goes on to the fluid because the spring has not had time to start deforming yet. And then only as the fluid is squeezed out of the piston due to that pressure on it and the spring starts settling, do you start getting loading on the spring? So here's what it looks like. You've got a uh, change in force on the y-axis versus time on the x-axis. Uh, slowly over time, the spring load will increase, and then it will asymptotically approach uh, delta F as time goes to infinity. And similarly, the fluid will, uh, the fluid force, or the force taken by the fluid will decrease by a proportional amount, such that the change in force in the spring plus the change in force in the fluid is always equal to the change in applied force delta F. Okay, let's move on now to uh, secondary compression. So. Um, this is a concept that's a little bit complicated, uh, and we're not even totally sure exactly what causes secondary compression a lot of the time. It's something that's been observed, we can measure in the laboratory, and then account for it in the field. Um, but basically, you can think of secondary compression as being volumetric creep. And so creep is just some deformation that happens slowly over time. And it's caused by electrochemical interactions and biological processes in the poor space of the soil. Uh, maybe other factors are at play as well. And it constantly occurs, even after consolidation has basically completed. So um, this is kind of like the, um, you know, the tendency of soil to become stiffer and stronger over time. We know that uh, sediment eventually turns into sedimentary rock. Um, that's not always caused just by high pressure, right? It can be caused by other chemical and, and chemical and biological processes that cause it to become cemented and become much stiffer and stronger and denser. So now if we piece all those together, here's a plot of settlement versus the logarithm of time. Since secondary compression is a really slow process, um, consolidation is also a pretty slow process, we tend to use log scale for time. So here's zero settlement, we apply some loading, the immediate settlement happens immediately, the time equals zero. Then consolidation starts, and it's going down like this. Uh, okay, and secondary compression is always happening, so it's even happening during primary consolidation. Okay, if you hadn't loaded the soil, it would have still had some settlement during, you know, this time frame just due to secondary compression. Uh, and then consolidation basically finishes at some time, and then you're left only with secondary compression eventually at the end. Now, uh, let's look at which components of settlement are the most important for different soil types. So for sands, immediate settlement is the most important component. Um, and the reason is that consolidation is generally not an issue. The hydraulic conductivity of sand is so high that it pretty much will drain as loading is applied to it for typical project sizes and so forth. So as you're placing load on the sand, you don't get this chain, this big buildup of pore pressure that slowly dissipates over time. Maybe you get some change in pore pressure, but it kind of dissipates immediately. So it drains right away, and it shows up as immediate settlement rather than consolidation. Secondary compression can be important for sands, but it's typically ignored. So um, over time, we know that sand will continue settling, and there are some methods for accounting for that. Uh, and then other sources of settlement for sands might be earthquakes, 
know, if you have a strong earthquake, sand will tend to settle. Um, other sources of vibration, machine vibrations, railroads, things like that, can vibrate the sand and cause it to settle slowly over time. All right, and when we go to fine-grained soils and organic soils like peat, um, all of them really can be important. Immediate settlement can be important. All right, so when you load it, you get that shear deformation mechanism happening. You can get quite a bit of immediate settlement. Consolidation is often the largest contribution, especially if you're loading the soil beyond the load that it's ever experienced in the past. It's an important concept that we'll talk about in the, probably in the next lecture or the one after that. Uh, and then secondary compression also can be important. Actually, for peat, for organic soils, it can be the dominant source of um, settlement. So it's important to consider it. It's often ignored, but it can be important to, um, to consider. 